All right, hello everyone. Welcome to the show that shall not be named. Today's prompt is chains. So I decided to do a floating castle. <laughs> of course. Uh, now, I the reason I decided to do the floating castle is because I wanted to have it like being held, you know, like the the little island it's on. Um, the idea was is that that would be held down by chains. So you can see I'm drawing the chains in right now. Doing these without a sketch can be a little bit tricky. Uh, I'll come through with some dashed lines and then use that as like kind of a reference point for each link, if that makes sense. My chains are a little bit tricky, but I feel like they're one of those things that's like once you've... It, it, you just got to practice them a few times. And once you kind of have it down and like wrap your head around it, it, it's fairly easy after that. It's just... You just got to practice it, is all. They're, they're really repetitive. Um, but... You can go loose and they don't have to be like exact or anything. It still gets the idea across. But yeah, here I'm, I'm just going through doing all, all this outlining. I'm starting on the castle now. The last castle I did was like a Dracula's castle. And I made it kind of... Uh, like it was made out of wood. And this one I'm going, trying to get like more of a stone look to it. So I kind of had wished that the previous one had looked more like it was made out of stone. Uh, so, you know, time to do another one. I don't know if this one's Dracula's castle or not. Vampire castle. It's just a floating castle. It doesn't have to be a vampire castle. It can be. It can be whatever kind of castle you want it to be. <laughs> so yeah, I'm cruising through here, doing a little bit of te uh, texture, like contour lining across the surface of the, the little floating island there. And then, yeah, here's the brush pen. I don't, I don't think I mentioned it er uh, earlier, but this is the third in uh, uh, the series of three drawings where I'm using the brush pen. And I feel like I'm kind of getting used to it now, but not uh, still not 100% fully comfortable with it. I am laying a, a lot more black in here than I, you know, than I was in previous drawings, at least in the in the bottom of the island there, just to get that all you know, in shadow. I think I, I think I'm gonna keep the brush pen as part of the arsenal. Uh, I just really like the uh, amount of like contrast you can get with some solid blacks, and it seems to work really well on this uh, sketchbook I'm using. So I'm gonna keep it. That was part of the reasoning for doing the these Inktober videos was to challenge myself. You know, I feel like I get stuck in a stuck in a rut of drawing the same type of stuff, and it's good to just mix it up, and do some prompts. You know, stuff I wouldn't normally draw. Yeah, here I'm starting on some hatching and cross hatching. Going through, give, uh, giving the sh the chains some shape and some shadow, and I think I'll do another pass over the chains um, a little bit later in the drawing, just to get them even a little bit more contrast. Uh, this is kind of the part I'm still struggling with a little bit is 
matching the hatching up to the solid black. Like, it doesn't seem to look right. Maybe it's just something I need to, you know, maybe it's a me problem and not a <laughs> uh, how it looks problem. <laughs> so I'm just going to keep trucking away and trying to uh, get it exactly how I want it to look. Yeah, so I'm coming through here again and drawing some grass texture and shading in that. I, I guess it's like a shackle type thing that that chain's attached to on the top. Doing a little bit of brick texture there. Yeah, I'm just going to cruise through and do hatching through all the buildings here. Just following, like, the angle at, at which it's, like, um, you know, the angle at which the wall is going in perspective, if that makes sense. Am I saying that weird? <laughs> Probably. That's okay. It'll be fine. Um, yeah, so I picked up a triangle. Uh, it's a 30 degree, 60 degree, like drawing, drafting. I think it's a student triangle. And uh, the reason I picked that up was for the, the 30 degree angle on there. I think... I don't know if I'm going to try it out on the next three drawings or not. It might not work for the, the prompts, but I want to use it for some isometric perspective. I don't think it's technically called an isometric perspective. I think it's called a pro projection. But it's I guess it's typically done at... 30 to like 30 degree angles it has something to do with the the I'm not exactly sure how it works I just like the way it looks <laughs> but it has something to do with all the angles adding up to like a certain number or whatever I don't know I gotta do some more reading on it um, before I tell you guys about it but it's a technique that um, people like MC Escher I think he used isometric perspective and they make a lot of like video game art and stuff like that. And, and it's how you get those, like, you know, the staircases that like the impossible staircases where it's like, it looks like you're going down the stairs, but then suddenly you're at the top of the staircase again. And then there's a triangle thing. I forget what it's called. Um, nah. No, 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 it's not coming to me. Anyways, it's like a triangle that like, it's like, like made out of rectangles, if that makes sense. And then it, it's another like one of those like where it would be impossible in real life, but you can draw it on paper. It's like an optical illusion type thing, right? And uh, I'm definitely interested in making stuff that kind of has a little bit of an optical illusion to it. So, so yeah, going to be experimenting with that. I don't know if I'm going to do it for the Inktober stuff. It, it's probably going to be stuff that requires a bit of a sketch. So <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how comfortable. I might just try a couple drawings out and see how I feel about it sort of thing. But anyways, yeah, I went through and hatched this whole thing out while I was blabbing there and <laughs> now I'm coming through with a uh, uh, thicker, this is a medium nib and I'm just adding some thicker lines and more contrast to stuff. And I'm trying to make it look like there's a little chunk of the island separating there. And then, um, 
yeah, I'm just cruising around the uh, the outside edge like I like to do to kind of make it pop a little bit. And yeah. I think that I like yeah, I like to go with this thicker line like right at the end so that I can use it not only to make the outside edges like a little bit more bold, but I can use it to do some like it you know, adding on to the 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 brush pen shading, you know, cuz it's easier to go th um lay down a little bit more black with that. It's a little more precise than the brush pen. The brush pen's kind of hard to control. There's some people who are just amazing at it, but I have a, a little bit of a hard time, you know, getting the, the end of that brush to do exactly what I want. I think it's just an experience thing. Also, it barely has any feedback and that's part of why I like using fountain pens is because of the the they have they're smooth but they still have feedback. You can press on them a little bit and it doesn't like make the line crazy thick. That's why I only use steel nibs. Uh, if you're gonna use a gold nib for drawing, it's gonna have a lot more line variation in it. Like a not like a brush, but like somewhere between a, a steel nib and a brush. And it's just, it's a little harder to control. But yeah, that looks like that's about it. I'm just going to finish up this hatching here and then we'll be done with the drawing. So thanks for watching and thank you to my patrons on Patreon. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a like. Consider subscribing, leave me a comment, all that stuff. And I will see you on the next one. All right.